What's going on, Star Wars fam? It's your bro host, Chris Ryans. And I'm Daniel Miller. And on shelves this week, we've got Star Wars Adventures Shadow of Vader's Castle from IDW. And Star Wars number eight from Charles Soule. And please make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and check out Broaxium all over social media. And let's punch, punch it. it. I watch Star Wars just to see Yoda. The planet Mustafar. A young native learns a Jedi Knight has arrived. Excited, he goes to sneak a peek to find a monster. This was no Jedi. This was the yellow, pained eyes of Anakin Skywalker, now known as Darth Vader. Frightened, our young Mustafarian tries to escape the monster's rage with the help of his friend, but both get swept up in his powerful wake. We flash forward to the fall of the Empire, and everyone on Mustafar are celebrating a great victory won throughout the galaxy, except two good friends who still feel that they will never be free while Vader's castle still stood. They decide to take manners into their own hands and plan to bring down the castle for good, but after stocking up on some supplies, they were interrupted and told a tale of warning about the dangers that await them in Vader's castle. I really look forward to reading these stories every Halloween season. It's so cool to get the spooky season mixed into the Star Wars and Kevin Scott did a wonderful job at giving me a spooky story that made me feel like I was sitting at a campfire. Issue 8 starts out a little while back, right after the events of The Empire Strikes Back. The Emperor wants a mission led to wipe out the remnants of the Rebel Alliance, but doesn't want to sidetrack Lord Vader from his mission to find Luke. Sidious mentions not having Tarkin or Thrawn to take care of the Rebels. Then Lord Vader suggests Tarkin's prized protege, Commander Zara. We then see Zara wasting away overseeing production on one of Kessel's mining facilities when she receives a transmission from none other than Lord Vader with an important mission that only an officer of her caliber could handle. This is a big assignment for her after her failure to bring Tarkin the head of Bernie and Roe back to him. And now the Emperor knows who she is, so she's gotta bring her A-game. We cut back to the present where Zara's fleet and the Rebels are having a fierce space battle. Zara's suited up and ready to personally lead a boarding party. Homegirl's on a mission and her target is Princess Leia. By the way, I need a Black Series figure of Zara. Now-ish. Once on board, Zara starts handing the Rebel soldiers the business. As the Rebels start to plot their next move, Zara's on their comms, and she wants a one-on-one -on -one discussion with Leia. A discussion Leia may not survive. I mean, she does survive somehow, we all know that, we've all seen the movies, come on. But it's the how. Now that part should be interesting. Another strong issue with masterful storytelling from Charles Soule. As I've said before, I'm a sucker for stories that humanize the Imperial officers. And just like those stories, she's kind of justified in her actions. Zara as a soldier? Well, she's good, like Infernal Squad good. And through this arc, we've heard the name of her Star Destroyer, Tarkin's Will. That name describes Zara to the letter. There's no better person to command that ship. It's not over yet. And thanks again for joining us for another Quick Shot of Broaxium. On next week's Quick Shot, we're previewing Darth Vader number seven and Star Wars Adventures Annual number two. Support your local comic shops. And may the force be with you, always.